There are some very exciting news for Indian chess fans and for chess fans all around the world, of course, because I'm going to show you some very fascinating game from the Tata Steel Rapid tournament, which was uh, taking place in uh, Kolkata, India last week. And it has a uh, fairy tale story um, I would like to, uh, to share with you as the event is as follows. It's 10 players, all play uh, all. And uh, the games are spread over uh, three days, so three games uh, per day. And just before the tournament, uh, Faisali, strong uh, female player from uh, India, sister of uh, Pragnananda, uh, she had to withdraw from the uh, tournament uh, because of um, unforeseen uh, reasons. And uh, she was replaced by another very young, talented player from uh, India. Her name is uh, Divya Deshmukh. It's a very young girl. I think she's around 17 years old. And uh, I remember her because she has the same age as uh, my student, uh, Eline Rubers. They have been uh, playing against each other in uh, youth competitions uh, before. And, um, well, she was playing the tournament of her life. You just hear that uh, a few days before the tournament, you're invited to play with some of the very best women in the world. And um, then you are allowed to uh, to show your, your best and uh, she uh, played a tremendous tournament after uh, eight rounds she had six points and she's playing in the last round against uh, probably one of her uh, heroes uh, she played against uh, Humpy Koneru and uh, that's of course an icon of uh, Indian chess uh, very strong uh, woman grandmaster uh, 2553 number two or so in the world. She uh, played for the world championship title against um, Hui Yifan, uh, lost it, but she is one of the best players in the world for many, many years. So this is an exciting final. Humpy Koneru with the white pieces against Divya Deshmukh. D4, Knight of six, C4, E6, Knight of three, B6, Queen's Indian, G3, Bishop A6, attacking the pawn. Now white has various ways of defending the pawn. Uh, with a queen, for instance, uh, or play b3. Humpy goes for knight bd2. c5, putting pressure on the pawn. And now there's a very sharp line in which white can temporarily sacrifice a pawn with, uh, with e4. Try to push the pawn to e5. This is not Humpy's uh, style. She wants to play it solid. Goes for the move bishop uh, g2. Knight c6, putting pressure on that pawn. d takes c5, b takes c5. And I think this sort of structure is often seen in the uh, Queen's Indian, and I think it's absolutely fine for black. With an uh, extra pawn in the center, there is absolutely nothing which uh, can uh, can go wrong. But on the other hand, white is very solid as well. Castling um, kingside, bishop e7, b3, castling kingside, bishop e2. All very standard uh, way of uh, playing. And the question is, how is black going to place the pawns in the, in the center? And Divya Deshmukh, Plays in a very ambitious way by uh, playing the move d5. I think it's an interesting move trying to uh, put pressure against the pawn on uh, c4, hoping to open the diagonal for the bishop, which, which actually happened in the game. I should also point out that a move like queen c7 to connect the rooks and then see later what, uh, what you're going to do with your pawns in the center also comes into consideration. But d5, very nice, ambitious move. That's what we would like to see happening when the underdog is challenging one of the pre-tournament uh, favorites. C takes d5, e takes d5, and we have a position with hanging pawns. Are these pawns weak? Can they be attacked by white's uh, minor pieces? Or they just take a lot of space and they are able to exert pressure on the uh, white position. As white's pieces, they're sort of cramped, not a lot of uh, space to maneuver. Still, it's, uh, it's more or less uh, even, I would say. Rook c1, queen b6, rook e1, over protecting the pawn on e2. And here, I would definitely play one of these moves just to get the rooks behind these pawns. It's such a thematical way of playing. But Divya Deshmukh plays in a very ambitious way, very aggressive way, very direct. Goes for the move knight e4, indirectly looking at that uh, pawn on, uh, on f2, but also giving white a chance to take on e4, changing the structure. Didn't happen, knight e5 was played. Also here, I think Humpy goes for an interesting uh, idea because maybe black is even gonna miss that knight on f6, which was supporting the pawn on, uh, on d5. Now after knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, uh, Deshmukh decides to place the rook 
on D8 to protect the pawn. Maybe the other rook could have gone there as well. Not really sure what this rook is going to do. Maybe rooks on C8 and D8, that's where they actually belong. Still, knight takes E4 is a possibility. And after D takes uh, E4, okay, it's a uh, sort of... Um, Active position for black with some weak pawns, but after queen c2, f5, I think uh, position is more or less balanced still. But queen c2 was played, white is putting more pressure against that uh, knight on e4, f5 played. And this is what Divya Deshmukh had in mind all the time when she played knight e4. She wanted to follow up with f5, supporting the knight in the center, and she doesn't see it as a weakening of her uh, of her king. And that's very interesting because I think a lot of people would refrain from such active uh, pawn moves. But Humpy is struggling to come up with a good plan. She makes uh, solid moves. e3, queen e6, attacking the bishop. Bishop goes back. Rook c8, over protecting the pawn on uh, c5. And now the knight goes to, uh, to f3. So white is standing very solid, but I don't like that you leave that knight on e4 unchallenged, I think. That's exactly what black is uh, is looking for and what black may even have played now is the move d4. I think this is a fantastic move. Always these kind of pawn moves, they have to be considered. The idea is that after take, take, queen is under threat and after the queen moves, you uh, put your pawn on uh, d3. So that pass pawn is uh, it's a very dangerous weapon, not only in the middle game, but also in end games. Remember that I've covered it already on the channel in uh, Rook End Games. So if you're interested in other content, make sure to check out and subscribe to the channel to understand these kind of pawn moves even better. Rook FD8 was played instead. Nothing is wrong with that. Queen B1, solid maneuvering play. Bishop F6, Queen A1, just Humpy is playing very sound positional chess, hope, hoping to uh, trade off more pieces. And look, King F7 is played. That's a very ambitious move. Divya Deshmukh says, okay, if you just take the bishop, I'm going to take back. I'm ready to take back with my king. And that's, of course, a nice activation of the king when the queens are coming off the board. But instead, Humpy says, no, I don't have to go for this exchange any longer. I can go knight e5. Check. The king goes back. Knight e3, king f7. Just checking what the opponent is going to do, a draw with black against one of your examples, one of your leading uh, model uh, players in the, in the world. You can repeat the moves, but Humpy says, okay, I want to continue. I play h4, Deshmu goes for h6, covering the g5 square, not really sure it's needed, but okay, not such a bad move. I'm thinking in a prophylactical way, trying to anticipate the opponent's moves, but Deshmu has different ideas. Look, knight e5, King g8, knight f3, king f7. Now Humpy says, okay, let's go for the repetition. King g8, knight f3. You can go for this uh, repetition now, but now Devia Deshmukh says, look, I'm going to take on b2, queen takes b2. I don't want to draw any longer. I push my pawn to g5. I'm playing for kingside attack. I want to bring up my pawn and uh, chase that knight away. If white would take this pawn, the h file is open and if you can just play a few more moves, you will get your rook over, your queen over, and it's going to be checkmate very soon. I mean, not that simple. You've got to move that defender from f3 away so that you can give checkmate on uh, on h2. But you get the idea that black is the one using the open h file. Rook ed1 played. And now, not sure about the move played by uh, Divya Deshmukh as she put a king on h7. I don't like the king there. I was thinking maybe the rook wants to, to go there soon, but after h takes, h takes, okay, the, the king's position is also quite open, and what, what you should try to do here as white is try to open the position to be able to infiltrate with your pieces later on. The key move is b4, trying to gain access to the d4 square with your knight. Whatever you do as black, for instance, you push the pawn to c4, I'm playing knight d4, attacking the queen, if the queen goes away, maybe queen e2, Looking for ways to infiltrate, trying to exploit the uh, weaknesses around the uh, black king. Things are not simple here at all. But what does Humpy instead? She offers the exchange of queens. That's a very remarkable decision. That really justifies black's play. The queens are coming off the board. The king is going to be centralized. Rook c2. Maybe the rooks will be doubled soon. King f6. And now the king is just a very active piece. Much more active than, uh, than the king on uh, g1. 
So the knight is in trouble, and what should you do with it? Well, Humpy just went back with the knight to f3. That's not looking great, because now the pawn comes in to g4. Hitting that knight, where's the knight going? Well, if knight goes to d2, offering the exchange of pieces, the bishop comes in to d3. Hitting the rook, very soon the pawn will come to c4. These minor pieces are dominating white's pieces, and black is way more active in this uh, endgame and the engines are really disliking white's position here as black is just about to create a passed pawn and uh, dominate uh, white's pieces so knight d2 cannot be played maybe knight h2 with the idea to go to f1 but that's not looking much fun uh, either in the game knight e1 was played and now where should black trying to break through. That's the question. Is it c4? Is it d4? Is it a way to prepare one of these ideas? Well, d4 is a really, really nice move here. After the exchange of pieces and you take on c8, black can recapture with the bishop so that the rook still protects the pawn on d4. Black is still very active. The bishop will come to a6. You're only playing for two results here, but I think black is very close to have a decisive advantage thanks to that overwhelming uh, peace coordination. In the game, c4 was played instead. Very tempting. I mean, very difficult to judge all these nuances with which pawn to, to push. c4 is very tempting as well. After bishop f1, things are still a little bit harder because the bishop on a6 is hanging. It's not really easy to take the pawn on b3. Black played king e5. And now, I don't understand why white just didn't take the pawn on c4 because if everything is getting swapped, you can take on c4, uh, first take on d8, then on c4, everything is getting exchanged. This looks very bad for white because there's a lot of counterplay. Knight is pinned, but after king f1, black doesn't have to move knight e2 as a, as a winning knight fork because the king comes in to e2 with a counter attack. If you take that rook, it's king takes d1, you're pulling up as white, but okay, this should probably just be, uh, be a draw. Still, I think white is under pressure, Releasing the tension with a move like b takes c4 is the recommended way of uh, playing. Instead, rook dc1 was played, but now there followed the move knight g5, and this is Divya Deshmuk at her best. Keeping that knight on the board is a very important uh, idea, because if now the pawn on c4 would be taken, everything gets swapped on c4, it's not good for white because of rook to d1. Attacking the knight, and after king f1, there is knight f3, you're winning the knight. That's the main idea behind this move, knight g5. You're anticipating to come in with your rook to d1 and set up a threat against that knight on e1. Bishop e2 was played. Maybe white is about to bring the king closer, for instance. But now, look, c takes b3. Attacking the rook, you're just capturing a pawn. And of course, white can just recapture. If rooks are getting swapped, you take the bishop. You attack the pawn on b3, white attacks the pawn on uh, a7. These pawns are getting exchanged and it should very likely end in a draw. No serious winning chances for any side. But Humpy thinks, I can take first on c8. Let's do that. Rook takes c8, rook takes c8. And after bishop takes c8, okay, a takes b3 is there. That's not looking too bad. Should probably end in a draw as well. But recapturing is not an obligation in chess. Don't forget that. Black didn't take that rook, just took the pawn on a2, threatening to get a new queen. All of a sudden, Black is having huge threats here, because if you try to uh, stop the pawn with your uh, with your knight, for instance, if bishop takes c8, the rook is gone and you have just two fantastic outside passed pawns. That's something you don't want. If you go back with your rook to c1, then it's just bishop takes e2, and there's no way of uh, wrapping up that pawn on a2 because the bishop comes back and if you try to get closer with your knight to take that pawn you give a check with your knight first the king is boxed in you play the move a5 look at white's pieces they're absolutely helpless and not able to eliminate that annoying pawn on um, on a2 which opens up the path for the king to come over and uh, just decide the game very soon Therefore, the rook decided to give a check. Now, after king d6, it's knight c2. Knight is covering the a1 square. Bishop takes e2, rook a8. The rook is trying to eliminate that other pawn so that the rook stays behind the pawn on a2. Knight f3 check, logical move. King h1, the king is kind of uh, hopeless in the corner. Note that king g2 runs into 
Knight e1 is a deflection of the knight as the knight also got to retain control over the promotion square. Therefore, king h1. And now I would just have played simple move a6 to secure that the pawn cannot be taken. The rook is badly placed. Things are looking awful. Instead, there followed knight e1. And after knight a1, a6 was played anyway. But wait a second. After knight e1, there is this option to take the pawn on a7. And after knight takes c2... Okay, you win a piece, but at least White has managed to get rid of that annoying pawn. Technically, the end game with two minor pieces versus the rook, black can try forever, and there are really good winning chances. I think black is actually winning here, but it, of course, it requires a lot of effort. I think this was a small slip from Divya Deshmuk after knight e1, knight a1 was uh, was played, as I said, and now the pawn went to uh, to a6, and uh, here you see the rook is out of play. The knight on a1, it's a very bad defender at, uh, at the corner square. Rook c8, bishop d3, rook c1, knight c2, guys. You're trying to eliminate a defender. If you take on uh, c2, bishop recaptures. If you take bishop, pawn promotes. If you go into the corner to attack the pawn, it's bishop b1. And look at this rook, it's just trapped. Bishop and pawn are protecting each other. The king will come over and it's just completely lost. Therefore, in the game, rook takes c2 was played. After bishop takes, knight takes. White is a piece up, but it's a very bad defender. And more importantly, that, that king is really far away. And after king c5, king g2, the king goes to c4. And you see that the king is on her way, on its way to attack the uh, knight on uh, c2. And therefore... Humpy resigned. Look, if you go king f1, it's king c3, knight a1, only square to block the pawn. And after king b2, the knight is lost and the pawn will be promoted. This is the moment Humpy loses to Divya Deshmuk, which means that Divya Deshmuk wins a super tournament in her home country as a last minute replacement. There is nothing more exciting than that to win in front of your own fans. Such a fantastic tournament. In the great style, defeating the country's number one. Hope you enjoyed this game. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And then definitely more coverage of rising stars from India in the near future on this channel.